if you're going to film a floss to a video, it helps to hit the record button. going. It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Floss 2. I am here on this Wednesday, July the 25th, 2018, with my next and overdue update. Sorry about it. I know I was supposed to film last week, trying to be a weekly kind of person, <laughs> uh, but that didn't happen. So let's address it real quick. Um, first of all, pat on the back because it's Wednesday. Second of all, um, it, Really what it boils down to is last week I was dealing with some gray days. Um, I don't want to say that I'm fully out of it yet, but I am... They're subsiding. They're subsiding. It's getting better. Um, and just to complicate matters even further, I was dealing with some really, really, really not cute blemishes on my face. <laughs> not cute. And I try really hard to be cute for floss tube. I'm kidding. Uh, but... Nonetheless, um, yeah, was not, just was not going to film last week. And like I said, I was dealing with gray days, so I thought, well, best hold it off a week. Um, as a result, uh, I have a ton of things to talk to you about. All of the things that I've worked on these last two weeks. Uh, you're going to notice that I am, I have abandoned all plans. Um, I also have... This is ironic, but I have plans for August. <laughs> August starts next week. Probably should talk about it. Plus my uh, my anniversary sale. Um, I'd like to show you what I'm going to be working on for that. That's really exciting. Uh, I have some purchases. I was going to wait and do this this video a little bit later this afternoon because I have some more things on the way. Uh, but I decided against it because uh, this video is going to be long enough as it is. I don't need to wait until late this afternoon to start. Better get it going. So there's that. Um, so I have some purchases. I have books and knits. Like, really, this is this is going to be a Jesse Marie Does Stuff, maybe short movie? Maybe? I don't know. You guys know I don't at this point of the day. Uh, so settle on in. Grab some stitching. Grab a snack, something to drink. Uh, also, full disclosure, a couple of things. Uh, my hair is a disaster, and the lighting's going to be all sorts of weird today. Uh, I don't mean to brag to specifically the southwest United States, but really anywhere that is going through a drought or some extreme heat right now. Um, we are on like day four or five straight of rain, and every day for the next seven days, 10 days in my forecast is rain. Um, and so it's overcast and it's gray. And so my hair is doing strange things because of all of the humidity in the air and I'm dependent on false light. So we'll see what happens. Um, but if I'm f fussing with my hair, I'm sorry. Um, it's something that I do. I will try to limit it as much as possible. It can't be helped today. There's that. So, uh, that being said, let's go ahead and jump in with some announcements. The first announcement I have is with regards to my PVC stand demo uh, that I have been promising for about a month. So that video is going to have to be separate from this one. <laughs> I'm running into all of the problems with this with this stand demo. Uh, and the reason for that is that I can't get the video file that I have, or files rather, I can't get them transferred over to Danny's laptop, which is where I do these videos, as we talked about about a year ago. Um, so, yeah, I can't, get, I can't get the files over here. I've tried Google Drive. I've tried iCloud or Apple Drive or whatever it's called. I've tried emailing the files to myself as well as to Danny over our several different email addresses. I have tried everything to get these stupid files over here <laughs> and I can't get them over. For whatever reason, it's it's a big struggle. Um, and so I'm instead going to have to, fingers crossed, get it uploaded through my laptop, which is the one that went through all of the troubles last year. 
Um, so like I said, fingers crossed that I can get it uploaded, but it's just going to have to be separate from this video. Um, and that's maybe, maybe the best way to go about it anyway. I mean, maybe this is the universe of science saying, hey, Jess, not everybody wants to watch that. Um, not everybody cares. So um, it's going to be a separate video. Expect that either tonight or first thing tomorrow. Um, I may just wait until tomorrow just so that I'm not overloading subscription feeds. So, yeah. Uh, that is coming, and I'm sorry, Stitchy Girl NSR. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, I'm trying, <laughs> and it will get done here soon, very soon. Okay, um, next announcement, next order of business is with relation to Jessie Marie Does Stuff D Stash. That's at JMDSD Stash on Instagram. Uh, so some of you have followed me recently on that account, and I would like to, first things first, apologize for the, um, for the lack of things listed. So here's what happened. Last we spoke, I talked about loading up the charts and kits and things that I wanted to de-stash. Um, and I was going to do that on Friday the 13th, or beforehand. Friday the 13th, as you may know, was the 20-year anniversary of my grandma's passing, and I just wasn't feeling it. Um, I also had a very traumatic experience that Friday. I will, I'll talk about that a little later. Um, but I, yeah, I just wasn't feeling it. So then I was like, all right, that's fine. I made an announcement on that Instagram D stash that I was going to extend the 10% off sale um, for another week so that I could get those charts listed so that if anybody wanted them, they could go for it. Uh, and as I was just talking, I went through a bit of a gray period. And so I just, I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling like going through all that. Um, I wasn't going to be dependable enough to get things shipped out in time, if I'm totally honest with myself. So, um, so I never, I never uploaded those charts. So, fast forward to a couple days ago, I'm like, you know, de-stash, or should I de-stash these things, or should I maybe try to find a better purpose. And so I think that I'm going to send the vast majority to Bendy Stitchy Michelle G because she's getting ready to do a live sale to benefit her Alzheimer's walk. And so, I don't know, I feel kind of weird like hosting my own D stash when it's, it could be sold and for the greater good. Um, I haven't talked to Michelle about this, so I don't know that this is happening yet. So, hey, Michelle, if you're watching, uh, you might be expecting a message from me here soon. Um, if she wants this stuff. Um, and if she doesn't, then I will proceed to list the things on my Instagram stash. But honestly, I think that it would just be better if I sent it to her so that she can, she can reap all the benefits of this stuff. Um, of the of the proceeds um, for her Alzheimer's walk. Regardless, we'll figure it out. I'm gonna figure out a better way to do things. Um, but I have to talk to Michelle about it first. So if you were like following my DSH account, like waiting for this stuff to pop up, I'm sorry for the hold up. I will make announcements on that account here um, at some point soon uh, to let you know what's going on. Okay, uh, whew, we got a lot of announcements today. Okay, um, next is um, sort of a decision that I have made, and that is that I am no longer going to be calling, <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about this, but whatever, um, I'm no longer going to, be going to be calling the act of ripping out stitches, I'm not going to call it frogging anymore, because that puts a negative connotation on frogs, and our beloved Amy of Amy Loves Toads has a soft spot in her heart for frogs. And so I don't want to put a negative connotation on frogs. And so from now on, I will be referring to that horrendous process as ripping. Um, because that's really what it is and that's what I feel like doing. I feel like tearing and ripping. <laughs> I understand where the term frogging came from. I'm fully aware. Um, 
but yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do things differently, so. Yeah, uh, okay, I don't know why I felt the need to talk about that, but I did. Okay, um, next I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody who informed me that roses and wild roses <laughs> exist in the world. Um, so I spoke last time about how I was going to call my John Elliott Rose Fairy, I was going to start calling her Rose Fairy because the flowers depicted are not what I would call roses. And many of you out there in the world, much more knowledgeable than I, informed me that there is such a thing as, as wild roses or dogwood roses or um, Christmas roses, as it turns out, um, such as hellebores. Um, yeah, so obviously my ignorance um, really, really got displayed there. Um, so a little bit of a, of a side story here, if you will. Um, after I finished the reader, I've had the question come up several times, Jess, are you going to do the whole quartet? So there's the musician, the gardener, and the embroideress now, um, which is the newest one, which should be available everywhere starting in August, I think. Um, and so originally, my plan was to stop at the reader because I was in band for a very short period of time when I was in middle school, but some of my least fond memories are from that period of my life. So I don't know if I really want to commemorate it. Um, and the gardener, um, so I come, I've, I've told this story a few times, I come from a long line of women um, with black thumbs. There's not much for gardening in my, in my family line. Um, I mean, sure, my grandpa took extraordinarily good care of his lawn, and, um, but, like, gardening is not a part of my history. And, in fact, um, I remember when I was a kid and you would do those, like, things for mom for Mother's Day, I would always ask if we could do something else other than a plant because my mom would kill it. <laughs> um, so, now you kind of understand Rose Fairy, my ignorance, my cluelessness. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the issue there. Yeah, but she will now be Rose Fairy, um, officially. I liked the idea of Rose Fairy, but there's... <laughs> <laughs> There's reasons for why she's called Rosemary. Okay, let's move on. Um, next, let's talk about the uh, past the stash that I started three weeks ago and promised to end last week, but obviously that didn't end until this week. Um, and I didn't close it until this morning. So that is Country Cottage Needleworks Afternoon in New York. Um, and this was a video from three weeks ago. I don't remember what number it was. Um, but I asked those who were interested to tell me uh, either somewhere in New York City they want to visit or somewhere that they have visited that they really enjoy, etc. Something like, something to that effect. And um, so all told, there were 53 entries. Now this is another case where the video situation, the video transfer files problem is coming into effect again because I couldn't get that to transfer either. So I'm just going to give you a quick recap here. We'll make it do. Um, so there were a total of 53 entries, so thank you to everybody who entered. I pulled names in order of... Um, I pulled names in order of comment received and then did a random number generator. I just hit generate once on random.org and it pulled, I believe it was number 40, which was Donna stitched with kisses. So Donna, I have already at this point replied to your comment on that video um, with an email address that you can contact me at and to send me your mailing information so that I can pass the stash and get this sent off to you. Um, and depending on when I hear from you, I will get it sent off immediately. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, and so 
thanks to everybody for, for entering. I hope to do Pass the Stash a little bit more regularly um, because I think that would be great, just sharing the love. So there's Afternoon in New York, and congratulations, Donna. Look forward to hearing from you. Okay, so that's it for the announcements. 15 minutes. Whew. All right. Next, let's talk Q&A. Okay, well, that was done. <laughs> no Q&A this week. Um, so, uh, as always, if you have questions, by all means, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to get to them next time. Um, there were a few questions, but they were more um, they were more personal. They weren't necessarily best suited for this. Um, so, like, I just replied to the questions. Anyway, okay. Uh, next is ISO and more specifically an ISO follow-up. So a couple weeks ago, I was in search of Magnolia by Black Swan Designs or Karen Weaver. And once again, you guys showed up and you were wonderful. Uh, within a few minutes of me posting that video, I had a couple messages on Instagram as well as on the video itself telling me that you found it already. <laughs> I don't know. I was looking for like a week. I couldn't find it. Um, but y'all found it at Valona Needlecraft in uh, California somewhere. And forgive me, I can't remember where Valona Need Needlecraft is based. And so I was like really geeked. It showed in stock. Um, everything was hunky-dory. All over her website, she says that if you want to place an order, the best way to do so is by email. Don't call, um, but email is the way to go. So I did. I e emailed her immediately, hoping, hoping that I was going to hear something back um, and that she would have it in stock and she could send it to me. So I didn't hear anything. Um, and so about a week later, I sent uh, another email like, hey, just checking, did you get my email? Um, in case you didn't, I am after this chart. Your website says you have it in stock. What's the deal? Yo. Um, and again, I didn't hear anything. So the other day, I went to go to her website, see if maybe the listing had been updated or um, to send another follow-up email or to make the phone call. Um, and right there in big red letters, shop closed July 16th through August 27th for summer holiday <laughs> or some, some, some dates like that. Somewhere to the end of August, her shop is closed. So I'm guessing she's not going to get back to my email for the next month. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, so I'm going to keep my eyes peeled um, on eBay. However, uh, another stitcher also sort of fell in love with the design when I mentioned it, and she found a copy on eBay. <laughs> like, I've been looking for this thing forever, and somebody hops on eBay and finds it. Uh, and uh, she said that she would share the pattern with me. Now, here's the thing about these ISOs. I This is more of a collection slash hoarding situation than they like I'm gonna stitch it right now kind of a thing um, Martha Agnes is still sort of it's still in the, the forefront of my brain I really would like to get that started um, but with this one with Magnolia I was after the pattern but not really anxious to start it immediately um, and so um, this wonderful stitcher agreed to lend it to me if I wanted to start it now. Um, since I don't, I'm going to let her hold on to it. She can make the decisions on whether she wants to work on it first or whatever. Um, I am real blase about it. The thing about it is that she's a pretty lady. And I got a lot of those. And I have another one starting in August and another, I think, I might be starting in September. Um, so, yeah. I don't, I don't really need that right now. Um, not really, don't really need it. So that is sort of the follow-up on Magnolia. I'm not gonna do any ISOs for a little while unless something really 
comes up. Um, but thank y'all to everybody who knew <laughs> where it could be found or for your, um, uh, just for your support and helping me find it. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into the works in progress. So these are the things that I have worked on for the last two weeks slash I am currently working on. And the first thing is what I was working on when last we spoke, which was, of course, Rose Fairy by Joan Elliott. And so here's what she will look like finished. Um, I have made the decision that I will be removing the wings. I'm not going to be doing the stitching the wings for this one. Um, I think she's really pretty on her own without wings. So there's that. Um, and you'll be seeing a preview here of what she looked like the last time you saw her. I was working in the bottom section and I was trying to get done her, um, the skin on her feet and legs and um, the floral bits around her feet. And I didn't quite get it all done, but mostly. There's still a few ninja stitches um, up in this region, still within that, um, I had said that I was working in the top four, or the bottom 40 stitches, um, height wise, and I was trying to work that all the way across. Um, so there's still a few stitches missing in that section, but for all intents and purposes, it's done, um, including the skin. So really pleased, um, to reach that small goal. Um, it was the abbreviated version of the goal, but that's how it goes sometimes. At the time, I was working on this and my Heaven and Earth design, and I was really feeling my Heaven and Earth design. Um, and so this one sort of took a back seat. And so I'm pleased with the progress, all things considered. Uh, this fabric, by the way, is a 28 count Lugana in confetti by Picture This Plus. Uh, yellows with pinks and blues and greens sort of modeled through it. It's gorgeous. So I am not currently working on that, and I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit when we get into plans. Um, despite the fact that I told you that I would be working on it for the last week of the month, um, I'm obviously not, so, uh, so we'll talk about it. So that's that. Then Friday the 13th rolled around. And as you all know, Friday the 13th was the anniversary of my grandma's passing. And so I made a new start. And that was this beautiful design. Forever and Ever, Songbirds Garden number one by Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, my flapper girl, Needleminder, who was with my Elizabeth um, up until I finished that piece last year. And then this cute little, she's kind of 70s cat that I got from Abby at Stitch Fun. Um, so, yeah, so there is that. Now, this is going to play into Hall and Ayla. I know that there's some unwritten rule about wait until you haul something before you start using it, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, I'm getting that. I'm getting. Getting things falling. Hold. Okay. Um, so I talked about the fact that I wasn't in love with my fabric stash for this piece, and that I had ordered a piece of Lakeside Linens from 123 Stitch to try out. Well, this arrived a full 24 hours early. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. Um, and so I was able to start it first thing on Friday. So the fabric that I ordered is a 32 count Belfast in Vintage Winter Sky by Lakeside Linens. And this is my first Lakeside Linens and I am, I'm hooked. Yeah, I'm in love with this. It's, it's gorgeous. Now, Christine from Stitch All The Things, she also ordered a piece of this and she said it's real blue. Um, it never showed up quite right in pictures. Um, on Instagram, it's blue. It's really bluey. Um, it's a bluey gray, but leaning more blue. Um, and even in some lights, I see purple um, more than gray. So it's definitely bluey, but 
I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm in love with this piece. I am absolutely in love with it. And so here's where I got to. Now I gave this piece three days and I was working on it alongside my heaven and earth design and so I gave it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I am just head over heels for this. This series is charted entirely in Week Star Works. Um, I believe she calls for Week Star Works linens and the threads that she calls for are Week Star Works. Number one, I only had three of the 20 some odd called. Um, and number two, I don't care for Week Star Works all that much anymore. I'm spoiled by some other thread brands. We'll call it that. Um, so I chose to do the DMC version. Now, she provides a DMC conversion. It is not in line with any Week Star Works to DMC conversion I've ever seen. These colors are much bolder than the Week Star Works versions. Um, you can see, for instance, that flower, the, um, specifically the veins in the flower are much brighter. It's just a much bolder color palette than the Week Star Works versions. And again, I'm not mad at it. I really, really love how this is coming together. I'm just, I'm head over heels. So like I said, I went with her, with uh, Vinny's um, alternate color palette. Um, the only exception is that the pattern calls for Cole and Mascara, both by Week Star Works. And the uh, DMC alternates for those are both 310. So I decided to go with uh, $37.99 for Cole, um, which is what you see in this insanely gorgeous lettering. I am obsessed with that lettering. It's stunning. It's so pretty. I, I'm obsessed with this. So one thing that you need to know about, about this series, um, it's big. <laughs> It's not small by any stretch. Um, it's 159 by 159. So we're talking like bigger than a Nora Corbett pixie. These are big. Um, and there's going to be 12 of them. Uh, so any hope of keeping up with this, <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Um, but that's okay. I don't, I don't, really, I don't even care. I'm going to collect them all and eventually at some point in my lifetime I will have them all stitched. And I think, I don't know if this is for certain, but I think that really they're going to be a little bit holiday based. Um, so for instance, this one is love forever and ever. Um, and then the next one to come out is merry and bright. Um, so very, very much a Christmas feel. Um, so I have a feeling that they're going to be a little bit holiday themed, or certainly seasonal. But I'm, I'm just so excited. And I'm in love with this. And I'm in love with this linen. And I want to work on this all the time. All the time. So much so that after August, uh, this is going to be a staple in my rotation. But I will talk about that more some other time. So, as I said, I worked on that for three days, um, which is really what I like to do for new starts. I like to give them a good three days. Monday morning rolls around, and it was time to give my Heaven and Earth design a full week's worth of attention. And I was so excited for this. I was so ready to just work on one piece for the whole week and to really dig my heels in on, on this project. And that is, of course, Heaven and Earth Designs in This Moment by Jeremiah Kenner. Um, so anyway, so there is that preview here of what this looked like the last time you saw it. I was part the way through page eight. Um, and this is being stitched one over one full cross on 25 count cream Lugana from Zweiger. And I finished the page. 
and I gotta start on page three. So, <laughs> this madness. So, you can see page eight here is finished. These gorgeous leaves. Yep, pinky purpley leaves. Sounds about right. That's the colors I was playing with. It was lots of fun. Um, and I'm just, I'm so impressed by how good it looks. Isn't that pretty? And then, uh, like I said, I got to jump on page three. So let's address the elephant in the room. Some of you were looking at this and you're like, hmm, that's where you were on Instagram the other day. You are absolutely right. That is where I ended on Instagram on Saturday. I haven't worked on this yet this week. So I guess you could say I am out of the hey, 100 Days of Hay challenge. Um, yeah. I, yeah. So I did what I do. I burned myself out. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I was supposed to keep working on this through this past Monday. And I just burned out. It just burned out. So I'm out of the hate challenge. But here's the thing. I'm going to keep going. Um, obviously, I haven't yet this week. But uh, I think that tomorrow, maybe tonight, maybe tonight, I'm going to put this back on the Q-snap and I'm going to keep going. Um, I'm out of the running for any prize drawings. But if I'm totally honest, do I need another heaven and earth design chart? Nope. I've got 70 <laughs> in stash. Uh, and that's quite enough for me. Thank you. So all the more opportunity for other participants to win that chart. I don't want to win a chart when I don't need it. Um, there are so many things that I want to get to. I have received some beautiful, generous heaven and earth design pattern gifts that I would like to get to in this lifetime. So I don't, I don't need to win one. So I'm totally cool with the fact that I'm out. I am not cool, however, with the fact that I am now behind on my goal. That's kind of a bummer. Um, so I need to get this put back up on the frame, and I think that talking about it here is going to reinvigorate me towards that, towards that purpose. So that's what's going to happen. It did reach the far edge. Um, as you guys know, it's my new sort of idea with these pages along the top um, to stitch that first row, and then I'll go back to my diagonal block business. Uh, moving forward. Um, so yeah, I'm out of the hate challenge, but that's okay. I'm I'm not I'm not bothered at all. Um, and I am gonna keep going on this. I'm going to keep going. I just have to get back to it. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so as I said, Saturday night, I was burnt out on the Heaven and Earth design. I wasn't feeling it anymore. Um, my goal for the day was originally another couple of blocks to get started on the diagonals. And I was just like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done for the day. So I called it quits on Saturday night. And then it was up to figuring out what I was going to work on next. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly where my train of thought was going or why it went this direction as opposed to any others. Um, but I was not feeling like Rose Fairy anymore. Um, I wanted to work on my other Joan Elliott's more than this one. Um, and it being Joan Elliott July, it would have been a perfect opportunity to do so. Uh, however... That's what it was. So I knew that I wanted to sink my teeth into a project. But my goal was to do some Christmas in July stitching this week. Specifically today, it being the 25th of July. Um, 
so originally I wanted a project that I could work on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then starting yesterday through tomorrow, work on Jingles by Lizzie Kate. Because I thought, okay, well that's another Year of Whips piece and it's Christmassy, Christmas in July. Like it just, it just all kind of adds up. It just kind of all makes sense, right? Well, so I didn't want to pull out another one of my John Elliott's and only get three days on it. I just wasn't, I wasn't in the mood for that. So I decided to go a different route and I let random number generator decide. And really what happened was uh, I did a random number generator by asking my husband to pick a number between one and 66. <laughs> um, yeah, because I kept trying to sabotage the random number generator. I would be like, oh, I didn't mean to click it then. Or um, let me reorder them so that it picks a different one. And I was like, this is cheating. <laughs> this is not a true random number generator. So I said, Danny, pick a number for me between 1 and 66. And Danny being who he is, he picked halfway in the middle, number 33, which is, according to date started, <laughs> Paula Vaughn's Quilts for All Seasons, and specifically, my book is falling apart here, uh, but the July quilt that I started in December of 2016 and have only worked on two days since that point. The day that I started it, and for one day in uh, Nano Stitch Mo last November. Yep, that's it. So, I was excited. I love working on my Paula Vaughn quilts. I haven't worked on any of them in a long time. Um, I was excited. I was ready to go. So, preview here of what this looked like the last you saw it. Uh, it's probably going to be just a picture because it's been an, almost a year since I worked on it last. Um, and I was basically just, I just had siding and some of the roses off to the side done at that point. So my fabric here is a 28 count Kesha linen in antique white from Zweigart. Uh, this is my only one on 28 count, but I'm not mad at it. And so here we are. I'm... I, I love what happened here, and I'm sad <laughs> at the same time. So I was working on the siding, and I ran out of that pale color there. Uh, I'm totally out. My thread stash is such a mess right now. Um, so that needs to be addressed here ASAP. So there's, so I stopped working on the siding, and I'm like, okay, so what can I work on next? So I thought to come here and work on the quilt right here. And try to work down that way. And I'm out of the first color I needed there. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what else can I work on? I like to work down. So directly under these half stitches here is this far side of the porch swing. Um, which it looks like an Adirondack chair right now, but um, it's going to be a porch swing. And so I worked that. And oh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. There are five colors of a bluey green in there, the early 500s, and I just, I had a blast. I had an absolute blast working on it. And it's just so pretty. I am in love with this. <laughs> um, it's so different from what even I would expect my taste to be. And I can't help it. I just, I'm, I'm in love with this. There is so much nostalgia in this piece. It's not even personal nostalgia. Like, I don't know what it is, but this porch swing just evokes emotion for me. Uh, these quilts evoke emotion for me. There's no quilters in my family that I can recall. Nobody has a porch swing or ever has had a porch swing. I don't know what the deal is, but this piece is important to me somehow. I don't know what the deal is. But I was out of this pale color for the siding and I'm out of this color for the quilt. So I had to stop. <laughs> I didn't want to, but I had to. 
So that's where it sits for now. But this is going to be, this is going to come up soon. I don't know when, but soon this is going to happen again. And I had Danny pick another number for me. And he picked number 24. Number 24 is The Berry Collector by Nora Corbett. So I have called her Little Miss Mardi Gras since I started her in Mania of 2016. This is another piece where before now I had worked in it for a total of two days. The day I started it and for one day during Nano Stitch my last November. And, uh, <laughs> I don't, yeah, it, it, it's just not sitting well with me that, that I've got so many pieces from two years ago with this sort of a, um, sort of a description. Anyway, so preview here of what this looked like the last you saw it. Again, it's a picture, and this is really an ink blot test. There was like a blob of green and some blue. Um, and so I got working on this on Sunday night. So I worked on July quilt Saturday night and Sunday morning and then switched to this Sunday night. And uh, my fabric here is a 32 count Belfast linen in autumn by Under the Sea Fabrics. And so here's where I'm at now. So basically what I had done was just down here and a little bit of this purse, and I've come up and done all this. All of that in these last couple of days. So, oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. So I talked about the fact that I was going to be working, I was going to plan on working on some Christmas in July starting yesterday through tomorrow. So I'm working on this on Sunday, and I'm like, ooh, this is good. This this is this is really good. And I'm working on it on Monday. And I zoomed up to the top. Granted, counted 8,000 times uh, to get to the top so that I could start working my way down. And I had this thought, hmm, do you think I could focus on this and finish it by Saturday? Because my Jesse Marie Does Stuff turns five sow starts on Sunday, and so I would like to have this done before then. Could I do that? This is little. She's only, I think, 114 by 148. She's a ton of beads. Six colors of beads. Um, and, of course, there's the skin conversation, because I'm a glutton for punishment, and I do the skin one over one on absolutely everything. Could I get this done by Saturday? Saturday night. And so I posted to Instagram stories. I said, hey guys, what you think? Um, and I posted a poll. And the poll was, um, do it. Or just you're crazy. <laughs> and the overwhelming majority of you said, do it. So... I was like, I don't know if you guys are like the most supportive bunch in the whole world or you like to watch me crash and burn. I'm not sure which of those is the option. So maybe it's a combination of both. Um, especially love the people who messaged me and said, I voted for do it, but I just want to let you know you're crazy. <laughs> uh, that was that was pretty fabulous. So guess what, y'all? I'm going to try. <laughs> I am not... Um, I just, I just think that it's totally doable. I mean, what do I have left here? I've got the bodice of her dress. Okay, piece of cake. I have one more chunk of the berries um, that's coming out of the purse once I finish the purse. I have some wings and some frilly details. I have another arm to stitch as well as the tops of her legs and her boots. So there's some stitching left to be done here. But I think I could do it by Saturday. I think I could. It was complicated yesterday um, by, um, first of all, I had to rip out her arm. It sounds horrible, <laughs> but I had to rip the stitches. 
from her arm because I got off and I tried to fudge it and uh, then her arm ended up being four stitches too fat like it was <laughs> it was bad so it had to be ripped out which is horrendous ripping one over one is never it's never a good time um, but managed to do it and uh, got it fixed and then I think that truthfully because of the having to rip out the skin um, I wanted to have the skin done by noon and by noon I had finished ripping the arm so um, I think that as a result of that I had a headache plus this weather whatever is going on with the barometric pressure I am feeling it um, so long story short it's a little bit complicated today as of now because there wasn't a whole lot of stitching at that point after that yesterday um, I was gonna stitch last night and I ended up not because of the headache so it's kind of a bummer so uh, I'm gonna keep working on this until Saturday and we'll see if I can get it finished now conversation here um, beads I have the beads I have the Mill Hill beads um, and I am not using them um, because I don't like to stitch with Mill Hill beads anymore and I really don't like stitching with Mill Hill beads on hand dyed 32 count linen and that's what this is and there are spots where this linen is like a 36 count um, for whatever reason this linen really shrunk and so I'm not feeling the I'm not feeling the chubby mill hill beads on this fabric. So I ordered delicas. I had to order some beads for something else, which I'll talk about here in a second. And so I thought, well, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw the delicas in. On top of that, this also calls for some size six pony beads. Those would never fit. <laughs> so I swapped it out for some size eight delicas. Um, that are gonna fit a little bit better uh, because yeah I'm just not I'm not feeling the Mill Hill bead situation there's also a stretch of 14 beads um, right there above my nail 14 beads side by side I'll be lucky if I'm able to do that in the Delicas let alone in Mill Hills so like I, that was like an easy decision so yes I have the beads but I wanted different ones. So I ordered them, and according to tracking, they will be here by Thursday. Uh, so they might be here in time. So I will do, I will, I'll do that on Saturday and maybe finish it. I'm really feeling the finishes. I like finishes right now because I have three new projects starting in August, at least two in September, and yeah just like finishes they feel good so that's what's happening I'm working on this until um, either until Saturday or until it's done whichever whichever comes first on Sunday starts the Jessie Marie does stuff turns five Sal so let's go ahead and switch over to plans. So I posted the announcement on Instagram yesterday, uh, maybe two days ago. Posted the announcement up there. Uh, and so a big shout out here to everybody who's going to play along with me. Thank you so much. I'm really excited for this and I love seeing everybody's plans thus far. Um, so here are mine. So day one. July 29th, Sunday, July 29th, this Sunday, um, is J. And so I will be working on January by the Cricut Collection. And I know that you all are surprised. You're thinking, uh, why not a Joan? There's a reason. Um, the Cricut Collection, I enabled a whole bunch of people a couple years ago to start this series. Um, so I figure, well, this is my Floss Tube Anniversary Sal. This is a really good one. 
Um, on top of the fact that Stephanie from Just Keep Stitching keeps talking about this collection and this series and it makes me want to get back to mine real bad. So I'm going to work on January. I also haven't worked on this since January of 2017. So this, I'm just going to show you real quick what where we're starting from here. This is on a 28 count cashew linen in ice blue from Zweigart. And here's where I'm starting from. You guys will remember when I started this, I just kind of started at the top and worked my way all the way across. And so now I can start really getting into some of these letters. And I'm really excited to do so. Um, so I'm gonna work on this on Sunday. So there's that. Then Monday, July 30th, is M. Um, and so I will be working on Marabilia's Lady of the Flag, of course. Um, so here she is. This is what she will look like finished. She's a foxy lady, lady of gratitude, Sal. So excited to work on this. Um, this is 32 count Belfast in vintage blue whisper. You guys see this project all the time, so I'm just going to show it again. <laughs> So that's where I'm starting from, and that's where I will, I'll probably work in this region, on this side, in July, or on the 30th. So there's that. This is to, in part, make up for the fact that I didn't work on this on the 4th. So there's that. Okay. D is... Um, July the 31st. And so I decided to go with Donna Stitches, Beauty and the Beast, or as it's called now, Belle. Um, and I went with this because Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorites. And I was supposed to be working on this piece one day a month this year, and that I think I stopped that in February. <laughs> um, so this is gonna get a day here in July. On the 31st. And by the way, bonus points if you are participating and you pick a Harry Potter related piece or you can make your piece Harry Potter related. If you can make it fit that story, you get bonus points. These bonus points don't matter for anything, but nonetheless. Um, okay, and my bell is on 32 count Belfast in uh, cream by Zweigart. And so I'll probably work on the rose. See, that's a rose, guys. <laughs> oh, love it. Absolutely gorgeous. My 2016 pieces. I mean, the fact that I still have 2015 pieces hanging around, 2014 pieces hanging around, it's kind of sad. Um, but my 2016 pieces, whoo, they need some love. Okay. Next, uh, S is August 1st and so I am going to be working on a crowd favorite Snow Castle by Heaven and Earth Designs and I'm excited to work on this for one day uh, but that's okay I talked about the fact that this piece was going away for the rest of the year and here it is coming back out making me a liar this is on a 25 count Lugana antique white easy count. And I finished the first three pages earlier this year. So I'm gonna get into page four on the first. And I believe that that's next Wednesday. I think, I think that's next Wednesday. Yes, so that is what I will work on next Wednesday. And then, day five is the bonus day. And the bonus day is whatever. Whatever you wanna work on. Do you wanna make a new start? Go for it. Do you want to work on your favorite whip ever? Go for it. Do you wanna work on the same thing you worked on for day four? Go for it. Um, do you want to work on something that I enabled you to buy and or start? Go for it. 
It's a great day for that. So I am starting something. It's got my name all over it. Quite literally. Um, it's not what you're going to expect. <laughs> uh, so I've got all of these things that I bought at StitchCon, and I've been talking about this change in taste, and I'm going, I seem to be leaning towards more primitive, less towards the pretty ladies in the full coverage. Um, <laughs> so what I'm starting is going to use these gorgeous silks. Dinky dyes a couple of Karen Water Lilies, uh, Classic Color Works Belle Um I've got Bullia in here, just really pretty colors. And I will be putting that on this fabric here. Um, this is a remnant from um, 32 Count Belfast in Friendship Green. Um, I bought a I bought a fat half because the other the larger piece of this I'm using for my KD sampler or uh, around the world in 80 stitches aka hashtag not a heart um, so this is my remnant and so this piece is going on on here and so this combination in tandem with the Adelicas and the Bicones that are on their way, um, when they grow up, are all going to be a Chatelaine. And the Chatelaine is workshop, I think it's number three, Jessica Stitches. <laughs> it's literally got my name all over it. Um, so I bought this pattern, oh gosh, years ago. It was probably one of the first Chatelaines that I bought. Um, and it is a workshop teaching you how to do Jessica stitches. Now, obviously, I know how to do a Jessica stitch, um, but these are various stylized Jessica stitches, and I'm so excited, so excited to, uh, to finally stitch this thing. I pulled threads from Stash um, because I didn't want to buy anything for this piece. Um, and... I did buy the beads, though, because um, I wasn't too excited about any of my bead options. Um, one of the beads called for, I can't remember the delicate number, but it's um, 24 karat hammered gold. <laughs> like, solid gold beads. I'm like, man, Martina, she couldn't do anything on a budget. <laughs> Not just gold beads, but hammered gold beads. Gold solid beads. So an average five gram bag of Delicas can run you anywhere from two to three dollars. That's a thousand beads. A five gram bag of these hammered gold beads. So you know that it's not quite a thousand because hammered gold would be much heavier um, as far as weight is concerned than, um, than an average glass bead um, is ten dollars. <laughs> So I did not order those. Um, I am super excited about this piece, and I have some 24 karat lined beads uh, that I bought for my birthstone dragon sal um, that I haven't found another purpose for, and so they will go in here. <laughs> but I'm not buying 24 karat gold beads. Anyway, I'm really excited about the beads that I got for it. Um, it's I think I got the other called for, except for the bicones, but that's fine. Anyway, so this is what I'm starting on day five. Um, there's a couple of things sort of playing into this. First of all, it's Jessica Stitches, which has my name all over it. It's also kind of a double meaning. It's Jessica Stitches, like there are Jessica Stitches on this, but then there's also the um, sort of the verb, Jessica Stitches. I stitch Jessica Stitches. Um, there's also the... Um, there's also the attraction to, it's a smaller project, it's a smaller Chatelaine. Um, it's been in my stash forever. I've wanted to do this piece forever. It's also, I'm doing my trifecta again. 
So I've got my Mirabilia and my Heaven and Earth design and a Chatelaine um, all going in there. So yeah, it's just all, it's all working out real well. Um, it's just all very Jesse Marie does stuff um, as, as much as I could manage. So there is that. So I'll be working on that. And I'm going to give that three days. So let's sort of transition into the rest of August. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the rest of August. So that is uh, through the second. So the second is when I'll be starting that Chatelaine. And then on the third and fourth, I'm going to continue working on that. Uh, because like I said, I like to give new starts three days. Then my intention is to work on Lady of the Flag for four days um, because she is still a she's still a primary focus piece for the remainder of the year um, so i'm trying to get her done on the 11th which is world cross stitch day belinda ozzy stitcher and i are starting fairy moon by mirabilia and we've had this in the works since last year um, since a year ago Belinda surprised me and found a seller who was selling this, an original, by the way, this is not a 2018 reprint, obviously. Um, so she found a seller who had this available and she had one sent to me. And so I will be starting her on August 11th. And I'm so excited about this, you can see. Uh, this is clearly the 1993 version. This design is 25 years old. Isn't that wild? So there is that. And my fabric for that is a 28 count cash out linen in shadow by Picture This Plus. The seller that Belinda found the chart from sent this to me. Um, it's gorgeous. It's not that purple. There is some purple to it. Don't get me wrong, but it's really dark. Um, it's like it's like eggplant, and it's a deep dark purple, and it's out of this world gorgeous. Um, but it's just not coming off properly. It looks so much lighter than it is in real life. Yeah, um, but it's gorgeous. And so my fairy moon is going on this, and I have a huge piece of fabric here. Um, because she's a massive design. She's 259 by 274. So yeah, she's big. She's wide, obviously. So there's that. So I'll be starting her on the 11th uh, with Belinda. And as I talked about before, um, I had planned on working on that piece this year regardless. Um, forget my new start rules or my pretty lady rolls. Um, I was starting her no matter what. So that is happening on the 11th. And I will work on that the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Then, this is kind of dipping into haul a little bit, um, but I was invited by Layla, novice stitcher, to participate in her birthday sale. And I was hesitant about this because at the time I was like, I'm not starting anything new. Like, I don't want to start things. And the theme for her birthday sale is fabulous, but I don't have anything in my current whips to fit it. Um, so I wasn't, I was apprehensive about it. But I started searching and I found this design and I was like, oh, I am so in. <laughs> I am so in with that. That design is an old Plum, Plum Street samplers and I've never seen this before. Um, the only place that I was able to buy it from was the Cottage Needle on Etsy. Um, I was originally looking on Etsy on, um, uh, for downloadable, uh, PDF patterns, uh, related to the theme. And I'll talk about the theme here in a second. Um, uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't find anything that really struck my fancy. Um, uh, so the theme for Layla's birthday sale is, of course, Tudor. So it's anything Tudor era, um, somehow related to any of the Tudor monarchs. It could be as simple as a Tudor rose, um, anything. And so when I found this design, I 
fell in love and I ordered it immediately. So this is the Queen's Sampler Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I. The end crowneth the work. How cool is that, y'all? Tudor roses. Queen Elizabeth there with her crown and her Tudor roses in her gown. The end crowneth the work. I am stoked <laughs> for this. Um, it only calls for six colors. It calls for NPI, but I'm going to do um, I'm going to do some hand dyes, uh, and I'm just really excited. So it's it talks about Elizabeth um, here on the back. And it has this cool black and white drawing of her. Um, and one of the lines really struck me. So it says, uh, despite political challenges, power-hungry suitors, and plots against her life, her 45-year reign marks what is thought of as one of England's most glorious eras. So popular was she with her subjects, they referred to her as Good Queen Bess, Gloriana, and the Virgin Queen. So that kind of struck a chord with me and so I was thinking that I would stitch this in Gloriana threads because I thought how cool would that be she's referred to as Gloriana I love Gloriana silks that could be fun so I pulled my Gloriana stash and I have three <laughs> and they are insufficient colors but here's what I noticed the logo is a flippin Tudor rose how cool I love that but I do not have the right colors for this. Um, they are either too highly variegated or they're blue and purple. Um, and that's just not going to work for this. So that's okay. So I briefly started playing with colors here and I pulled too many and so I will have to edit down. Um, but this is a various collection of uh, color and cotton threads from the months past and then one Nina's thread and I think that this Nina's thread is going to go in there. Maybe not. Maybe it's too pink. It might be too pink. Anyway, so um, I'm going to have to play with that and to pick my colors. I think that this dusty rose color, what is that? Antique rose. Yep, that's got to go in there. So I'm so excited for this. So this sal starts uh, for Layla's birthday on the 23rd of August. And so I will be stitching this, and I am so geeked. I'm so ready to start this. Um, and um, the fabric that I'm using, I think, I have to make sure that it's big enough. But this is the other half of my Autumn by Under the Sea Fabrics. And so I think that that would look just, I think that would look really good. It's not a very big design. I think it's 148, 142 by 88. So I think it will fit that. Um, but I'll have to I'll have to measure and figure things out. I'm so excited for this. Layla, thank you so much for inviting me to your birthday sal. Um, I am going to include the link to the group uh, so that y'all can y'all can join in on Layla's birthday sal, something tutor or make it fit. Um, she said if you if you can tell a story and make it fit, go for it. Um, okay. So I will be starting that on the 23rd, as I said, and working on it on the 24th and the 25th. Also in August, I will be working on my Witches of Salem piece for the um, Stitcher's Coven uh, Summer of Salem Sal. I'm going to work on it for the last three days of August. So the 29th, 30th, and 31st are going to be dedicated to my Witches of Salem because I have to figure out a way to get them worked into this, um, into each, get that piece worked into each month. Um, and it wasn't going to happen at the beginning of the month, so I'm just going to put it at the end, and I'm going to cap off August with that piece, um, because I just, I have to work on it. And then we'll see what happens uh, September 1st. We'll see what, what the new sal is. Um, but for the meantime, I will be working on um, which is of Salem at the end. Also in August, I will be doing Arbitrary August. So I've just listed off a pile of dates where I'll be working on specified things. 
I will be participating in arbitrary August outside of those days. So here's how I'm going to do things. Switching projects every day is not so easy for me. I get burnt out doing that. I don't like doing it. So instead, what I'm going to do is two days. So um, after Lady of the Flag, then there's two days before I start Fairy Moon. So I'm going to random number generator from all of my whips, absolutely everything. All 66 of them, except for one exception. Um, and I'm going to pull a piece, pull a number, whatever it corresponds to, and work on that for two days. And I'm going to repeat that process for the other days where I don't already have something assigned. Because I really wanted to participate in Arbitrary August, and I just had to find a way to make it work for me. I, because I have sort of changed a little bit, and I'm working on some things, some other things, um, I now kind of feel some freedom to be able to work on my non year of whips pieces for arbitrary august so i'm really excited to to play along and see what gets pulled like i said i do have one exception and that is not quite white work by uh, northern expressions needlework and the reason that that is an exception to this is that my heaven and earth design i will be working on my q snap and that piece, I also have to work on it on my Q snap, and it, it won't fit in my Millennium. And I think that that's the only piece like that. Um, it won't fit in my Millennium, even my big one. Um, and so rather than go through the process of switching out Q snaps uh, for this for this event, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to omit that piece entirely. If it gets drawn, then I'll just redraw and pull something else. Sarah, Stitch and Mommy, talked about the fact that she's going to vlog for Arbitrary August, and so I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to come back each week and have my regular updates, and then I might insert the vlog clips, if I can, if I can figure out this file move debacle. Um, I'm going to insert my vlog clips, or I'm going to upload a vlog separate, but I'm still going to be able to do my weekly updates because I am still working in some other things. I'm working on Lady of the Flag and these new starts and um, Jesse Marie does stuff turns five, Sal. Um, so yeah, I'll still be able to, um, to do regular updates. It's just that there might be another vlog separate from it or incorporated in. Not sure yet, so we'll see. I've already talked about the hate challenge. I failed it, so to speak. I'm out of the running for the prizes. That's okay. I'm going to keep going. I have made the decision to bring back Hade Weekends because that worked really well for me last fall on Faces of Fairy, and I ended up getting that project finished in October. So I'm going to bring back Heaven and Earth Designs Weekends. It works out beautifully because we are on the cusp of football season. We're almost there. <laughs> we are five and a half weeks, nope, six weeks to the first tech football game against Florida State on Labor Day. We are seven weeks away from the first home game versus William and Mary. Um, so football season is almost here. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> um, and so Hade Weekends, I think is a really great, it's a really great opportunity for me. Um, because if it's the only thing that I am stitching on and we're down at tech, I can put in my stitches while we're at tech. Not a problem. Um, if it's the only thing that I'm working on and we're home, because either it's a um, it's an away game or it's an off weekend, or um, as the case may be, there might be a couple games that I missed this year, um, so I'll be home on the weekends. Then I can get some good some good progress into my hades. Uh, and more specifically, in this moment, that's the only piece that I'm working on for the rest of the year, um, hate-wise, except for that one day on Snowcastle. Um, you guys know me. Uh, you can't trust anything I say for too long because it might change. Uh, so I'm saying this now, but just wait a little bit. It might, it might switch up. Anyway, uh, so currently the plan is to... Um, 
work on just in this moment for the rest of the year and see what I can do with it. I'm hoping to get these three pages done, three, nine, and 15. I think that would be cool. So we'll see. Okay, so that's the Hade discussion. Now let's talk about Europe Webs. It's July and it appears that I might have seasonal affective year of whips disorder. And that is that every July I get done with the whole year of whips concept. I think that I've sort of pinpointed what happens. So the first half of the year I'm extremely optimistic about what I can get done. Um, there's, it's winter and there's tons of stitching time and I've got the whole year in front of me to accomplish all of the things. And then we hit July and we cross that threshold into the back half of the year. And the back half of the year does two things. First of all, it flies. And second of all, it contains football season for me. And so I get into a bit of a panic. I'm looking at everything that I have left to do in order to see this large year of whips goal accomplished. And I'm comparing that to the amount of time we have left and the two are not adding up. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to get this, this whole thing done. And so this panic sort of leads to this... Um, like, I'm done. Like, I want to quit. Um, it's not going to happen, so why am I bothering? I'm out. I want to quit. So I recognize this within myself. Especially after finishing up Rose Fairy and then burning out on the Hade and not going back to, to a Year of Whips piece, but instead going to anything. <laughs> um, I recognize that this has happened. And so what I have decided is to pare down my year of whips goals. I am no longer trying to finish Elephants by Jane Netley Mayhew, Under the Moonlight by Passione Regamo, Joan Elliott's Rose Fairy, The Two Pages on Mini Pirate by Heaven Earth Designs Sabine Rich, Jingles by Lizzie Kate, Raven Queen by Mirabilia. I'm not stressing about those pieces anymore. I'm just not. Um, I recognize that stitching is a hobby, and so um, I am self-imposing these things on myself, and so it's my own. It's my own doing. I recognize that. I operate a little bit better when I have a schedule or a plan or a goal. It's just, it's just how my brain works. Otherwise, I get, um, let me see, Brian from Blitstitch called it decision fatigue or um, analysis paralysis. I don't do anything if I have to, if I'm faced with a decision such as that, um, such as what to work on in amongst everything that I have currently going. So I have to, I have to have a plan or a schedule. Um, and in order to not want to quit and run away, um, I decided to pare down the whips. So my new year of whips pieces are as follows. In This Moment by Jeremiah Kettner, Heaven and Earth Designs. Of course, I'm working on that for the weekends after August. August is a special case because of this arbitrary August and all of these starts and whatnot going on. But moving forward, Weekends are Heaven Earth Designs weekend in this moment weekends. Lady of the Flag, of course, will remain my number one priority for this year. Flower of the Month by Ellen Moore Stroh. I have three flowers left that were a part of my Euro Whips goal. And so, like, it's totally within reason that I can, I can do that. Those take me five to six days apiece, um, depending on my concentrated effort. And so that theoretically should be done by now, long by now. But the problem is that I've had to spread myself very thin <laughs> on these other pieces um, to work on 
just so many other things. And so I haven't been able to work on flowers in a month, and I really like that piece. So I'm going to get back to that and try to get those three flowers done. Prairie School or Alphabet? Those two letters, getting those two letters done this year would be really, really satisfying. Um, and so, not to mention, I really just love that piece. So I am leaving that in the mix. What else am I leaving in the mix? Opus 2 by Long Dog Samplers. That's another piece that suffers from this. I always want to work on it, but then I feel this attraction or this draw to work on this obligation to work on other things. I'm not obligating my stitching anymore. Um, so if I want to work on Opus 2, then by golly, I'm going to work on Opus 2. <laughs> uh, and any of these other ones. So the goal for Year of Whips is at least half of your projects finished. And so two letters, three pages on uh, in this moment, three flowers, Lady of the Flag, Opus 2. That's ten pieces. And I've already got a pile of them done. So I will essentially reach the, the ultimate end goal um, if I'm able to get all of that done before December 18th. So I like I'm not I'm not I'm not heartbroken about any of it. I'm not bothered. I have to change my approach. Now, I have a favor to ask. If December rolls around and you start hearing mutterings from me about participating in Year of Whips again next year, stop me in my tracks. <laughs> stop me there. I don't need to do this next year. I don't need to do this. Um Having focus pieces is great, and so I can have focus pieces without participating in Year of Whips anymore. Um, it is, it's too constricting. It's too constricting. Uh, I have so many beautiful pieces in my whips that I always want to work on, and I just, I haven't been able to. And that's not cool. That's not cool. So I'm not, I'm not doing Year of Whips anymore. I'm done. I am retiring from the Year of Whips. It is a fabulous event, and it's great to help you be whip focused. Um, it's just not uh, it's not for me anymore. It's just not for me. So yeah, moving forward, nix in that idea. I'm out. Um, so don't let me, please don't let me do your whips anymore. Just don't let me. Okay, that's enough with the plans. Let's get on with these additional topics. So the first thing we're going to do is stash acquisitions slash haul slash purchases slash whatever. Um, and the first arrived yesterday. This is my color and cotton for July. Yes. And I'm not pulling them out, although I might use that gold. And maybe that green in my uh, Queen Elizabeth. We'll see. This fall spice is gorgeous. Yeah. Love. Um, next, from Under the Sea Fabrics, I ordered the Mirabilia 25 year anniversary celebration. This little mini um, that. So there's that. Um, and I also received Lady Mirabilia, because of course. Um, of the reprints, there was only one that I didn't have, and I didn't care for it, so I didn't feel the need to uh, remove a copy from somebody else who really wanted it. Um, but there's Lady Mirabilia. I love her. I love the arch. Um, and there is a giant... Charm crystal thing in here. It's massive. It's taking up a bunch of space. Can you see that? Um, and it's the it's the butterfly, right there. Let me see. Oh, it is exclusively available with this chart. Cannot be purchased separately. Hmm, that's fancy. So there's that. Um, yesterday. 
yesterday one of uh, one of my viewers and a friend of mine and a huge fan of Thor um, I didn't ask this person if I could say their name and so I won't um, they contacted me a couple weeks ago and they said hey can I have your address I would really like to send you something and I said well yes of course and that arrived yesterday um, it may have arrived earlier but we didn't get the mail until yesterday and that is the world of cross stitching um, what issue is this? Everybody does this. 256 from July of 2017. So this is last last summer and it's featuring uh, this owl from Shannon Christine Designs. And this summer is, I love this collection. And the reason that this person decided to send me this. Oh, well, I pulled out my bookmark and then lost it. There we go. Is this. What a cutie a little bulldog. So, um, I am going to have to stitch this. I'm going to have to change the colors, of course because my bully is um, much lighter coloring um, and he also has the cute little brown spot on his head um, but that's okay the rest of the um, the rest of the features are there including the teeth sticking out and that funny little side sit that bulldogs do <laughs> if I can get a picture of Thor doing that I will I will share that it's hilarious and adorable so I'm gonna have to stitch that up so to you beautiful person thank you so much for this um, I so very much appreciate it and I'm gonna have to dig through this and see what else is in here love that isn't the world of cross stitching isn't that the one that's gone under I feel like I'm remembering that maybe anyway so there's that that was beautiful. And then, so Bendy Stitchy, we all know she's doing these Instagram auctions. And um, so to, to benefit her Alzheimer's walk, of course. And so she posted something from this maker. And I had been avoiding this <laughs> forever uh, because I really don't need this obsession. I don't need this obsession, but whatever, it happened. Um, so I set a max that I would be willing to spend for this maker um, and for what was being offered. And so I participated in the auction and I lost and I went over what I said I was going to and I still lost um, and I contemplated going over again and I still lost so like I just I wasn't gonna win this auction and deservedly so so then I felt like a big fat loser <laughs> and so I went on this person's Etsy store and ordered one myself um, and so that is Diddly Daddle Designs, Teresa, and she sent this wonderful little thank you card and a handwritten note on the inside. I love little things like that. And I like this cardstock. Uh, and so I lost on the purple bag with the yellow accent. And so she had a bag with a yellow accent, and I said, yes, please. This yellow is so happy. Gorgeous sunshine yellow. And the outer fabric is this gray with yellow, and she put a bird on it. So, love this. Um, and this zipper pull is very cool. Fabric color covered button. That's, that's wonderful. This is beautiful. This is a beautifully made bag. Teresa put up today on Instagram that she's working on some Christmas bags, and Lord help me, I do not need another bag. I don't need project bags. 
a year ago I was doing my year of whips, or not my year of whips, my whip parade. And I talked about the fact that I don't need project bags because I'm going to want them to match. And I don't need 80 project bags and I don't have the budget for that. And so I wasn't doing the project bag thing, the fancy fabric project bag thing. And then Emily went and changed all that. <laughs> and I have now three of hers and uh, more on that later. And now this one from Diddly Daddle. And I'm trying really hard to just not look at them. Like if I don't look at them, they don't exist. And I don't want them. However, this one, my forever and ever is going in this one. That piece is special enough to deserve a project bag. Uh, so that's that's happening. It's going to go in here. Uh, birds and flowers on this. Um, I think these are little chickadees. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe finches. I don't know. I don't know things. So don't, don't believe anything that I'm saying. They're birds. <laughs> um, and this is really, really gorgeous. So, so that's my project bag from Diddly Daddle Designs. One thing you should know about Diddly Daddle is that, uh, just Keep Stitching has a coupon code, so go watch their video. Uh, the coupon code is good through, I think, the end of September, and it's as many times as you order. Uh, and she donated a bag set for Michelle to sell for Alzheimer's, so like all around a really, really um, forward-thinking company. I'm really excited about Diddly Daddle, and I hope that she does wonderful things. Um, and I had to get in on one of her bags. So there's that. We talked about the fact that I have three Emily bags now, or Mamalee bags. Uh, that one will be here in about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Um, also in here in about an hour is a bad case of FOMO, um, that I succumb to. So we'll talk about that next time. Um, and I think that that's it the purchases. I think there could be other things, but that's it for now. Okay, let's switch over and talk about books very briefly. Last night I was having a hard time falling asleep and so I read for a little bit and that helped. So I think that I'm going to try to pick up reading before going to bed um, instead of playing phone games and giving myself a headache in the morning. Not about it. Um, so I picked up the book and I had a hard time putting it down. Um, I haven't yet finished it. Um, and so I'll talk about that book when I finish it. When I do finish it, I'll be starting this. This is The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. Um, the reason that I had to have this is um, Ann P. did a review for it. She recently read this and she said it was a spooky Vermont story in winter. So I'm there. I'm here. Uh, I'm ready. Um, and so I'm ready. I'm going to read this as soon as I'm done finishing, uh, as soon as I'm done reading The Four Monkey Killer. So there's that. Love it. So excited. Um, and I will talk more about these books as I read them. Okay, that was it for books. Let's talk knitting. I have just one project that I have worked on, and it's the only project that I am working on until it's done. So that is my Through the Loops Mystery Shawl 2018. And I am pleased as punch to report that Clue 5 was released last Friday, and I finished Clue 5 yesterday. So I am ahead of the game. Me, on a mystery shawl from Kirsten and Kapoor. Me, ahead of the game. I think I finished my 2016 mystery last fall. So, like, this is unheard of. This is out of this world for me. Uh, yeah, peek there. There's a little purple. So, when last we spoke, I had a few rows left of Clue 2 to do. And then Clue 3 was to release, or no, Clue 3 had released... Clue 4 was releasing that following Friday. Okay, so, Clue 1, Clue 2, Clue 3, Clue 4, Clue 5, Clue 6, Clue 7, Clue 8, 
Clue 2. She did recently come out and say Clue 2 is probably the most knitting in this whole thing, which explains why it took me almost two weeks to do it and why I got so far behind. However, that Saturday following my last video, we were supposed to go to a family reunion and I woke up that morning with a horrible migraine. There is nothing like waking up to a migraine, y'all. Nothing like it. And there's nothing like waking up to a migraine on a day when you're really looking forward to something. So, unfortunately, I had to miss the family reunion with Danny's family. And, like, I'm still kind of beating myself up over it. Um, it can't be helped. It was held outside. It was almost 100 degrees. That plus a migraine? Nope. Nope. Uh, so it couldn't be helped, and it was okay, and everybody was very forgiving, and nobody was, like, upset at me or anything, but I just, I was bummed. Anyway, I knit Clue 3 that day. The whole Clue. Um, because once I finally started feeling better, uh, I couldn't stitch, so I knit. And I'm not even going to try to show you this lace. Um, any more than what you can see here because it's just not going to come across until this is blocked. I'm a little concerned that the color that I chose here for color A is too light and so you're going to miss the lace unless it's draped against something dark like it is right now. Um, but we'll see. Blocking is going to change this piece so very much. Um, and in clue three we got into some striping with my color B, finally, and here's where we are now. Clue four knit up real fast. Ooh, there we go. You can see that lace. It's complex. It's there's hardly any rest rows. Um, it's wonderful. This is this is wonderful. It's also coming off more pink. Than it is. It's a purple, um, but it's deeper than it's showing you. It's more like that. I mean, it's berry colored. It's definitely berry colored, but it's not as pinky um, as maybe you're getting. But yeah, so clue five, all done with two days to spare. Clue six, the final clue, is coming out this Friday. And I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to be doing a knitted on border because that's a Kirsten Kapoor special. <laughs> it's not my favorite thing in the world to knit because it takes forever. Knitted on borders, it's basically where you turn the work to the side and knit down this way. And so the border, the border pattern is usually like anywhere from 10 to 25 stitches. And so you think, oh, this is a piece of cake, 10 to 25 stitches. No big deal, except that you only pick up a stitch every right side row and there's nearly 200 stitches here. So we're talking 400 rows of a knitted on a border. <laughs> uh, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm not, I don't know that for certain. We don't have the clue, like I said, until Friday. So, so there is that. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to block this. I'm so ready to block it. I'm hoping that next week I can wear it. That would be so exciting. And because of all this rain, we haven't broke 85 in like a week. <laughs> it's been a long time. So like it's not, I don't want to say it's cold, but it's cool enough to where I'm not, I wouldn't be miserable if I was wearing that next week. So I'm very excited. Um, so that is all that I am knitting on until it's done. After it's done, I think that I'm going to go monogamous on my uh, RNG3 shawl because I would really like to get back to that. Um, and so I'll show that whenever that comes to fruition. Whew. So everybody, that concludes this week's video. If you stuck with me through it all, thank you so very much. Uh, thank you for your continued support of me and my channel. 
Thank you for hanging with me. I hope that everybody's doing well. I hope that you're stitching. Uh, I will see you certainly next week with an update video, certainly next week with a, um, an anniversary video, so stay tuned for that. Can't even imagine what you might find there. Uh, stay tuned for next, probably tomorrow, um, the PVC stand demo. Yeah, lots of things coming. Lots of videos coming at you. Um, so I am going to head off here. Thanks again. Much love to y'all. Much stitchy love. As always, y'all, be kind.